Welcome to week 18 where we have unlimited diarrhea. But it's okay because we're going to follow the money. We're going to follow the motivation and help you get your starts right. Make sure you subscribe and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into the podcast. That's the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, you nasty boys. <laughs> nasty. Andy Holloway is out today on family business, but that doesn't matter because I'm here with my best friend. Best friends. Best friend for life. Jason Moore. I am Mike the Fantasy Hitman, right? Jason, how are you today? I'm pretty good. Um, I, I think things are are happening, are happy, are well. Um, the only downside that I see is that people, some people, right, have to play fantasy football the, this week. The scoundrels, the scoundrels have to play fantasy football, and we're here for you. Yeah, and we get it. We know you're not the commissioner of that league. We know you are not. The commish of that league. You better not be. Our listeners would not commish a week 18 championship, but you're in with your buddies and it's out of your control. So we're here for you. It's just, I'm so sorry. Just so sorry for who you're going to have to start. Yeah. Week 18, as all final weeks of the NFL season, is shaping up to be the nastiest of the nasty boys. Uh, Kyle is reminding me, <laughs> thank you, that last year, week 18 heroes. Included the likes of Davis Mills, oh, yeah. the QB1 on the week. Davis Webb, the QB4 of the week. Davis is Any two. other Davises? Uh, Michael Davis. Nice. I just made that up. Yeah. Hey, maybe there's a Michael Davis out there, and they got real excited that I'm talking about him. But welcome into the show. Oh, Zach Moss was the running back, too? That was just a, that was a foreshadow of things to come for him. Thank you for joining us for today's episode. Some quick housekeeping things at the top of the show. It is the final day for Foot Clan Giveaway. FootClanGiveaway.com. We are giving away a signed Travis ETN jersey. You can enter completely for free. How do you do it? Well, FootClanGiveaway.com. And then you just do a couple things to help support this show, including a couple votes for the Sports Podcast Awards, which is a vote for us, for the, the main fantasy footballers. Also, the DFS boys are up for an award as well. So it would be very cool if we can take those home this year. Mike really wants them. I love winning, you man. You do. You, you're a winner. You're a winner at heart, but we need you guys to do that. So footplangiveaway.com. Yeah. I voted. Part two, I don't doubt that I voted all. for us. That, well, thank you. Thank you for your vote, Mike. Yeah. Um, you, but, think, you think when people are running for president, they don't go vote for themselves? That's a, that's a solid point. <laughs> I would hope so. I like, would hope they're like, well, I nah. need to be democratic about this, so I'll vote for the other person. <laughs> that other guy's way better. What a that's loser talk. Okay, all right, yeah, vote. I'm gonna go vote right now. Thank you, thank you. Footclangiveaway.com, and then yeah, you can win a Travis Etienne jersey for helping yep. us out. And then those who are already champions, like yours truly, or you are about to become a champion, FantasyChamps.com. That's where you got to go to get the swag. I ordered the ring. I'm very excited to get that thing and have it displayed just looking Jason directly in the oh, face. Man. I, right I'm going to adjust the light yeah. so there's just a single beam right, right into your pupil. Right in front of our desks, like yeah. right above our desks, we have mounted our uh, all of our rings. Like We've got the trophies elsewhere, and they usually travel. But every year we get the championship rings for whatever championships we've won. We've won. And I was looking at them, and I've just got a glorious display. You do. You have a very nice array. And I'm like, I can't. It I won't can't. grow this year, though. <laughs> it doesn't grow this year. That's too bad for you, but for everybody else, fantasychamps.com. And if you are wanting to buy something for the league, you can buy a trophy or belt. And if you use the code free ring at checkout, you can get a $59 championship ring for free. Again, with the purchase or the trophy or the belt. Just put both items in your cart. Code free ring. Join us on our Discord, BallersDiscord.com. Make sure you're staying connected with the show. Again, we don't go anywhere, but no. I mean, it's Dynasty time, and I will tell you, the Dynasty people on the Discord, they love Dynasty. 
as much as we do. I'm very excited to get into prospecting, so you can check that out. Anything other here at the top of the news, Brooks, or are we ready to get in the news? Let's go. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Starting quarterbacks as of now for, oh, your, for championship week. This is a fun list. The Ravens will be starting MVP. No, no. Pro no. bowler. Pro bowler, Tyler Huntley. The Browns will be starting Jeff Driscoll. We'll see if he has a plan. The Chiefs will be starting Blaine Gabbert. Oh, the blonde bombshell is back. The Vikings will go back to Nick Mullins in their uh, Hail Mary to try and make the playoffs. The 49ers, hopefully there's no ghosts on the field because Sam Darnold will be out there. The Commanders, regrettably, will be starting <laughs> Sam Howell, Sam. which I saw a note that Sam Howell is now the first quarterback to start every game for the Manders since Kirk Cousins. Yeah, that makes complete sense. We talked about this offseason, how many quarterback changes they have had as a franchise. And what's crazy is they tried to change it. They didn't want yeah, him to yeah. play the entire season. Um, but, yeah, these uh, these these quarterbacks this week, they – Unlimited diarrhea. They are unlimited. They are unlimited diarrhea. However, there's one more quarterback you haven't yeah, mentioned Yeah, no, yet. I was going to do it. I'm going to hit – this is just for you, Jason. Starting for the Rams. Yeah. Oh, baby! Carson Wentz! Not Matt Ryan. The five-year-long bet of Carson Wentz versus Matt Ryan. Who's out of the league first? I'm in the lead again, baby. <laughs> Carson's playing. How do I turn this off? Do I hit the button again? Yes, yeah, sir. hit it again. All right. I didn't want to pull an Andy and have us sitting in the, the, the red light the, the red light. <laughs> But Carson Wentz, if you haven't, if you have not been a part of that, I'm sorry, you've missed out on the best bet of all time. Years and years ago, Jason and I made a bet who will be out of the league first. Matt Ryan, Carson Wentz. It was a roller coaster of emotions. Up, down, like each we have each won this <laughs> yeah, bet several times, about five times each. Where it's like clear cut, Carson's done. He'll never yeah. play again. Or Matt Ryan's done. He'll never play again. So this is why. Yesterday, when this news broke, Mike, you said, I'm waiting until the completion of next football season <laughs> yeah. before I declare you the full victor. I think you have a really good chance of winning. <sighs> but Matt Ryan could Joe Flacco yeah. come back halfway through next year, lead a team to the playoffs. I would say that's impossible if not for our bet. I think these two gentlemen know about our bet and have really been playing us the fools. Very possible. The Rams have ruled out Kyron Williams, Cooper Cup, Tyler Higby. All their stars. Oh, wait. There's one guy that they decided not to rule out. Puka Nakua will start the game because Puka Nakua needs four receptions and 29 yards to break the NFL rookie record. And w the press conference that Sean McVay was in, um, he said, you know, I think you'd like to be able to see him get an opportunity to do something special and then be smart with him. What he is saying, if you're not familiar with coach speak, is we're going to bubble screen him to four for 30 and get him the heck out of the game. Yep. You you should not play Puka Nakua this week. If you have him, treat him like he's out. Now, that's not to say that once he gets one of these screens or one of these passes that he can't have a 75-yard bomb and be fine for fantasy. He's a super awesome, good, talented player. But should he get to four for 30, that baseline, or he's at four for 35, they will yank him. He will not play another snap once he has these records. That's a done deal. So you better hope that he's at 29 yards, you know, and still or 28 yards, right, and or still playing and gets a bomb for a successful fantasy day. I I view Puka as someone I'm not wanting to play this week. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, Raiders head coach Antonio Pierce said Josh Jacobs is a game time decision. So we are at about a month straight <laughs> of game time of decisions. game time decisions for Josh Jacobs, which he has been on the outside of. Uh, he's, he's still not practicing, so until he gets full practices logged, I think you just got to assume he's still going to be gone. Raheem Mostert did not practice Wednesday. It's a Sunday night game. We're only bringing that up because like Mostert has not been practicing on Wednesday, but then he did it last week, and it was nothing. No concerns here. Uh-oh. Raheem Mostert is out. So if he's in your championship week, you better be paying it's attention. It's a super important game for the Dolphins. We covered that yesterday on the importance. And and also, if you didn't listen to yesterday's episode, 
we do talk about all the implications of week 18 who's who's motivated to play very important listen Which to that we do have an article on the website should you forget you know throughout the week life gets crazy matthew betts has written up a beautiful article laying it all out for you including some financial incentives of players that they could thresholds that they could surpass this weekend but again raheem mostert because it's a sunday night football game you have to have a pivot just in case mostert is out and then in the San Francisco news, Elijah Mitchell, the, the number one is, waiver pickup is, of the week. This is back-to-back -back weeks that the number one waiver wire pickup was a running back who was set up for incredible success. But Elijah Mitchell this week, he didn't practice on Wednesday because of an illness. And then we got an, a report from The Athletic that they believe Jordan Mason is going to see an expanded workload in week 18 instead of Elijah Mitchell. Interesting. Uh, could be related to Elijah Mitchell has – a propensity to get hurt and you'd rather not have him get hurt in a meaningless game so those are all things to pay attention to that was today's news and notes presented by usaa insurance learn more at usaa.com slash insurance let's try and talk about these games fantasy forecast we got two saturday games the NFL just has said the, the, your week belongs to us now. Pittsburgh sitting at nine and seven. They will be taking on a very relaxed, nonchalant Baltimore Ravens, sitting at thirteen and three, locked into the number one seed. While Pittsburgh is fighting for a playoff spot, Pittsburgh is favored yep. in this game minus four, and the DraftKings DraftKings sportsbook line has Pittsburgh favored by four, and the over under. An incredible 35 points. Yeah, this is the Baltimore Ravens benching a lot of their star players. Now, obviously, they still have to field the lineup. They're not just benching everyone. This is a solid team front to back. I don't see this as a team in a divisional matchup that could play spoiler against their the Steelers' rival. I don't see this as a team that's going to lay down. But obviously, they, yeah, I agree. the Steelers are favored to win. They still have Mason Rudolph, who... Uh, yeah, they're know, sticking with the hot so, hand. So far in his two starts has, has been pretty good. Um, He's been better than the other quarterbacks more, by a lot. More impressive in the second game than the first game for me. The first game, a lot of that was just George Pickens' doings. Um, you know, on, but like he, the, he kept doing last it, week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I'm saying like week one, I feel like it was like screen that he took, you know, super far. But um, yeah, so you're going to have no – Ravens to start I mean maybe Melvin Gordon maybe yeah oh man that's <laughs> that's that's, that's bottom what you get of the barrel that's bottom of the barrel in a championship matchup Melvin Gordon um we've I've I've done worse things in my championship matchups oh yeah we sure have uh but so Mason Rudolph will be the starter Najee Harris Jalen Warren both got it done last week that was Najee's first 20 plus point game since week 11 of last year Jalen Warren was the RB11 last week on 17 opportunities. George Pickens is Mason Rudolph's dude, a 31% target share over the past three weeks. Absolutely crushing. And Deontay, you know, four for 76 this past week. I feel like everybody's in play. Like the Ravens defense, they're starters. You know, that's a strong unit. However, over the past six weeks, the Ravens against fantasy wide receivers have been 25th giving up over 30 points a game. Uh, I'm not even going to bring up the tight end because Mason Rudolph just does not prefer uh, Pat Fryermuth. But I think that everyone everyone's playable here. The, it'll be tough for the running backs, but again, we don't know what the defensive starting lineup will be. But I think they're all in. Do you see uh, it a different way, Jay? Yeah, I mean, I, I would certainly rather start Najee and George Pickens over Jalen Warren and Deontay Johnson. Um, okay. Like, I'm I'm happy to start Najee and Pickens right now. The other guys are just, what are my options? Even though Jalen Warren has, he's been getting enough opportunities to be fantasy relevant. He hasn't been super fantasy relevant recent. I mean, l this last week he was, but prior to that, it hasn't been a good stretch run. So hopefully you could do better. I'd, I'd play him over a Melvin Gordon on sure. the other side. The Houston Texans, 9-7, and seven, take on the Indianapolis Colts, who are also 9-7. and seven. The DraftKings Sportsbook line is Houston, Houston. minus one. I did not. Is that surprising to you, the road team being favored here? No, they're the better team. Well, they are, but I, 
I mean, they're both nine and seven, and this is this is a Ooh. playoff game. The winner continues; the loser goes home. Kyle says that the line has been flipping back and forth, so the okay. the betters are influencing that. The over under forty seven and a half. We like that. Colts home games average fifty one combined points per game between the two teams. We like that. On the on the Houston side, C.J. Stroud. An opportunity to get into the playoffs as a rookie. He has been cooking. He is certainly the rookie of the year. Quarterback 13 versus Indianapolis in week two. Week two. And, you know, we were just getting a glimpse of what he could become. How are you looking at the Houston Texans side of the of the ball, Jay? Who are you playing? Uh, I'm looking at the Houston Texans side of the ball with love in my eyes <laughs> and a full heart. Love in your, your eyes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, the, the, the heart Oh, emoji. like Bugs Bunny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Um, this this is the game of the week to me. It is the most quintessential playoff type of game, super important to both teams, and it's a matchup of two teams that we've been targeting all season for fantasy, both offensively and defensively. You can kind of see how this game's going to play out rather easily. Five of the last six games for the Colts have hit the over. The Colts are one of the – I mean – that right now, on the course of the entire season, they only have five games that haven't hit the over. They are usually going above that. And with C.J. Stroud on the other side, healthy and going, um, I'm very, very excited for this game. You've got kind of two different funnel defenses here. Uh, the Colts are a run funnel defense. We'll talk about Devin Singletary here in a little bit. Just an awesome starting matchup. And then the, the Texans are the opposite. They're going to be passed on all game. More difficult to run on them, um, but it's not like you're not going to start Jonathan Taylor. So I, I pretty much want all the pieces in this game. Nico is in for sure. Okay. Dalton Schultz is in. Devin Singletary is in. Those three are. are you messing around with Noah Brown at all? I, Did not practice Tuesday or Wednesday. Yeah, he's been so banged up and had you know one big performance recently. I think you just assume that his health isn't reliable enough right now to make him a championship week start. That's fair. On the Colts side of the ball, Jonathan Taylor, yeah, he's in. Zach Moss, I don't, you can't play him. And Michael Pittman, I mean, this oh. this game's pretty easy because yeah, Michael, yeah, yeah. Michael Pittman has had a fantastic year. Michael Pittman, the discussion that I'm looking forward to on him is forward thinking because he has to get a contract extension, which, yeah, I mean, <laughs> Michael, if if he is not given the bag by Indianapolis, he Oh, he's getting he money. will he will be the most sought after free agent wide receiver. I don't expect him to hit the market. The Colts are going to keep him in. But this has been mostly most of the production has been from Gardner Minshew. We had a you know just a tiny glimpse of Michael Pittman with Anthony Richardson as the starting quarterback, and Richardson is it's wild. Like I feel like he's been deleted from memory. Uh, yeah, from our just mind. because of how the, the the way that the NFL season goes, where Anthony Richardson was on the fast track to being a superstar quarterback, the story was going to be not C.J. Stroud. The story was going to be Anthony Richardson. So that's going to be very fun to talk about. Can Michael Pittman get it done with Anthony, Anthony Richardson? Just as a reminder, week one with yeah, Anthony he was Richardson, yeah, he was targeting. 11 targets, 8 receptions for 97 and a touchdown. So the the answer is yes. Um, and but, and, but on the other side of the uh, the field for them, Josh Downs. What happened? Yeah, he's just, I mean. Hasn't been top 48 since week eight, and that includes some scenarios where Michael Pittman was missing time. Yeah, I, he, it's just, it's, he's not a super great player. What happened here? Um, but, I mean, he was he was ramping up, being very featured in the offense, and then he got, I, we know that he's been dealing with an injury the entire season, and then right in the middle of the season that, Really shut him down. Twenty percent of the snaps in the game against Carolina, twenty five percent against New England, and they've been kind of going back up. But his involvement has not. Yeah, this this game's pretty easy. You're not going to start Josh Downs. Pittman is in. Jonathan Taylor's in on this side of the ball. The other side, Singletary, Nico Schultz are in, and and of course C.J. Stroud's a great play this week. All right, we'll we'll knock out the Sunday slate in just a moment. We will be right back. The Cleveland Browns wait, are. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, wait. 
Oh. I think this is the perfect time to tease something happening tomorrow. Oh, okay. Andy's Tell me not, about Andy's it. not here. Yeah. And Andy's not going to listen to a week 18 episode. If he does, he's going to skip to like the starts of the week, see who we got or whatever. Right. He's not listening right here to the browns Bengals matchup. And I want the Foot Clan to know. He lost four times in a row. I was the winner this week. And so for I get the, to pick for the, his for chain the, the, for, the, at the, the end of the episode for tomorrow for okay. the for the fantasy faceoff. I teased this when he wasn't on the footcast a couple weeks ago. Dude's getting a pie in his face. <laughs> well, you're just going to full on tell I'm people just, what's happening? I'm straight up telling people tomorrow I'm pieing him in the face. So stay tuned. Hey, Foot Clan. Don't tag Andy on social media. No, 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 no. This Come is, on. Yeah. This is between friends. I trust I trust the Foot Clan. You, I just, I, wow. I'm giving you inside information so you can make sure you're there tomorrow. There could have been like a real big reveal and you're just telling everyone what's happening? Oh, the big reveal is the is watching it. Okay. Yeah. You're going to enjoy well, it. Well, that sounds like a lot of fun and I'm yeah. glad that it's not me. Yeah. Getting it or rec- or giving it. Either. I, I don't, look, I don't even know what you're talking yeah. about. Plausible deniability. I've, I've removed myself from this conversation. Back to the Cleveland Browns, eleven and five. They are locked into the number five seed. The Cincinnati Bengals, they're eight and eight. They've been eliminated from the playoffs. What a what a game we're gonna have here. Two teams. I mean, with guys, nothing to play for. I mean, players with stuff to play for. The last time they played was Week One. Cleveland won twenty four to three because Joe Burrow does not like starting hot. That's like he's he is so opposed to it. Week one, disasters, that's kind of his thing. The Cleveland offense has been getting it done, but that's with Joe Flacco. And now it is Jeff Driscoll uh, <laughs> signed off the Arizona practice squad. Yeah. Um, what are we – what this – The game doesn't matter. It people doesn't, are – people paid to go to this game. This is a sham. People pay to go to preseason games too. I know, and that's you know. also a sham. Um who could you possibly start from the Browns side of the ball? Because the Bengals' defense isn't good, and you want to run on them, right? Yeah. But it looks like Jerome Ford not going to start, I would I would imagine. I, I would, would imagine, yeah. I don't know how much they will use Kareem Hunt. You, you, is Pierre Strong? That's, is, he that's, a, is he a title winner? I think he's I, a nasty boy. He's a nasty boy that could get the job done. Um, the, the, the I mean, it's a great matchup. Um but gosh, it, I mean Cedric <laughs> Tillman at wide receiver. It's just yeah, like I like I'm not, Cedric Tillman. Yeah, he was okay. I like I liked him as a prospect, all right. But he hasn't done anything, and he's been on the field a lot. I, do you realize how much he's been on the field? Uh, I see the note now. Since week nine, eighty-one percent of the snaps. I mean, yeah. since the um, what did they do? What What am I missing here, Kyle? What What was the change? They I've, traded uh, Donovan People Jones. That's so, what it was. Donovan yeah, yeah, yeah. They They traded him up to. to, to to Detroit that opened the spot for Cedric Tillman it hasn't turned into production but I don't know he's an interesting rookie that maybe can do something for I don't know maybe a DFS lineup maybe on the other side of the ball Jake Browning he's in contention like you can start him he has been hot and cold for fantasy but QB 18 but then four four eight 21 eight he's getting after it yeah I think you could start the Bengals I mean I you know, it's one of these things where a lot of the teams this week have nothing to play for, but they have had nothing to play for, and so they're still playing ball. They're not trying to keep guys healthy for the playoffs. Um, they're just like, hey, we this is our last week. Let's go out and, and uh, you know, play some football, whereas the teams that are playoff bound and have nothing to play for are wanting to rest guys. So I think Jake Browning and Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Joe Mixon, they're, they're all starting here, and you, you aren't as afraid of the – you know, I, I don't know if you start Denzel Ward and, and Miles Garrett no, or if they if, play if a whole the Browns, game. Yeah. The the sketchy thing for the Bengals is remember that Jamar Chase is still healing from his shoulder injury. He gutted it through because they still had a chance to get into the playoffs last week. So Jamar not playing, that would not surprise me at all. Pay attention to the news. And then T. Higgins in that game tweaked his hamstring to the point that even the head coach – like there was a quote from him saying, oh, "I thought that Higgins was going to be out for the rest of the game, and then all of a sudden he's back on the field drawing a off or a defensive pass interference." Yeah, just just so maybe he just, plays. I, I you just got to be prepared for them to yep. sit these players. But if they play, if they start the game, this isn't one of those situations where it's like, well, they're going to get a quarter and pull them. I, that would surprise me. 
Yeah, I, I can agree with that. The Minnesota Vikings, 7-9, and nine, take on the Detroit Lions. Uh, the DraftKings Sportsbook line is Detroit minus 3.5. The over-under is 45.5. Minnesota, the note we have, they need a lot to happen to make the playoffs. We're not even going to lay it out. They just they need a lot to happen. The Detroit Lions, after uh, what are we what are we calling that? Uh, what Re- happened? Ref gate? I don't know. Re- uh, um, eligibility? Eligibility gate? Yeah, <laughs> really rolls off the tongue. Just it's, it <laughs> names itself, Mike. <laughs> eligibility <laughs> gate. Man, uh, they still can move into the to the number two seed. They have to win. I think they need like the Eagles and the Cowboys to lose something like that. So it's a long Dan, shot, Dan but, Campbell but Dan has, Campbell's high T. I he, think his players are going to play, but if this game gets out of hand, which is very possible, if it gets out of hand, then the I imagine that the the starters would be pulled from the game. I, I think but, this is a game where you can start players without a massive fear of playoff implications. Like I'm more confident in the Detroit players than I would be the you know like Jamar Chase and Higgins. Yeah, yeah, finishing the whole the the whole game. Nick Mullins is back. He is a absolute wild man. Thank goodness for Justin Jefferson. <laughs> I mean, Justin Jefferson is is going to have uh, he should have a super good game here. The Detroit Lions, um, <laughs> they are last on the course of the season in schedule adjusted fantasy points given up to wide receivers. You have a banged up Jordan Addison at best. You have no Hawkinson, and you got Nick Mullins who's just going to go and try to get Justin Jefferson Justin injured Jefferson, across the middle of the field. Jay Jets needs 120 yards or so to get to 1,000. Yeah, he'll get it. So it wouldn't surprise me if Jefferson's in the huddle reminding Nick Mullins, yeah. counting down the yardage. Because there's even with all the games missed, there's no way that Jefferson, Jefferson's going to want that 1,000. Oh, for sure. And he should get it. I mean, Justin Jefferson is, a, is you know, he should be a start of the week, but everyone – should automatically where are you with Jefferson. Jordan Addison um Jordan Addison w- without TJ Hawkinson there um you can have a little bit more confidence he played 92 percent of the snaps last week when we thought he wasn't even going to play right so I'm not too worried I, I I think because of the matchup against Detroit Jordan Addison is an okay play this week all right and then Detroit just business as usual Goff isn't the greatest start here against the Minnesota uh, defense. Gibbs will be in. Montgomery, you're you're going to play him. Mm-hmm. Both those guys, Amon Ra's in, and I, and I think that's it. I think the only question is the running backs from the Vikings, the Ty Chandler and and Alexander Madison. Yeah. Madison was up to forty percent of the snaps last week, and Detroit is very difficult to run on. So if I can avoid, yeah, if that, I've got a, dov- a pivot option away from. Both Ty Chandler and Alexander Madison, I I would I would I would rather start Jalen Warren, um, okay. over those guys. Say so the Ty Chandler, it did not work out the last time they played Detroit. It was eight opportunities, which was eight for seventeen on the ground. He did have the touchdown, so it wasn't you know just abysmal, but he couldn't get it going. He had a much better week last week against Green Bay, ten for forty on the ground, and then three for twenty four through the air. So yeah, I, yeah. yeah. That there could be better starts. The Jacksonville Jaguars at nine and seven take on the Tennessee Titans at five and eleven. DraftKings Sportsbook line is Jacksonville minus five. The over under is thirty nine and a half. Trevor Lawrence was limited in practice. I imagine that he will be playing in this game. Meanwhile, on the other side, Will Levis did not practice after leaving the game again, just freshly coming back from his injury. So it's probably Ryan Tannehill. What are your storylines for this game, Jay? Well, for the Jaguars, it's a win and in situation, lose and out. So this is a playoff game for them. That leads me to agree with you that Trevor Lawrence will tough it out and will be the starter. Um, you've got a, a run defense that coming into the year, Tennessee was really, really good. Middle of the season, they were easy to run on, and they've locked it back down the last six weeks. They're top 10 uh, in fantasy points, giving up two running backs. I don't know how you could sit Travis Etienne. You're in the championship. There's a lot of players that you can't rely on. So he's in, but I've got kind of mild expectations for him in this matchup. Okay. I think with a hobbled Trevor Lawrence and um, a resurgent rush defense for the Titans, uh, you know, I, I view him as a low-end RB1, high-end RB2 this week. 
And, I mean, it's probably a matter of the game script because they won 26-0 to against Carolina last week. But Tank Bigsby got on the field. He got 10 opportunities. He was 10 for 32. Okay. Not not great, but for uh, what Tank has been doing for, yeah. uh, for the rest of the season, he'll take it. Uh, Calvin Ridley? Calvin Ridley is okay. The matchup against Tennessee, you want to you want to target them with wide receivers. So I'm absolutely fine playing him. Uh, I think, you know, and obviously Evan Ingram, he's just been so reliable this season, even though the matchup's not great. Kind of, Kyle, irrelevant. do you know how close Evan Ingram is to the record? Because I know that he, in total, uh, tight end receptions in a season. So I'm, I'm wondering if they will, if he's close enough that they will attempt to make that happen. I okay, Kyle's think he's, I think he is. No. Kyle's looking it up. All he's, right, look it up. I don't think he he's has 104 close. catches, man. Yeah. I, I guess maybe I'm I'm mistaken with the, what the all time record is. Yardage, no, but no, no, no. I'm talking receptions. Uh, Kyle will find it. Yep. On the so, other side of the ball, Tennessee. We do have a report here, Jason. Okay. Okay. From the uh, the from the weather desk. Boo doo doo boo doo boo. Burlington, Vermont, Sunday, January seventh. Here's what is projected. Okay. Snow during the morning that oh. will transition to snow showers during the afternoon. High near thirty degrees. All right. So Winds last are, last week it chance was snow seventy percent. Last week it was not snowing in Vermont, but it, there was snow on the ground. Was that just the mistake? We thought it was snow on the ground, but it needs to be snowing. Well, and I don't think it was was it on game day the snow. And if, we're talking, of course, about Derrick Henry and the undefeated snow model. It kind of felt defeated last <laughs> week, if I'm honest. I feel like we took our first <laughs> L on the snow model. Derrick Henry has been. Pretty solid the whole year. He's had a couple down games. Two of them were in the last three weeks, both against Houston. They had his number. He didn't score five fantasy points in either game. But if you look you know, at the last five games, taking Houston out, he's been the running back eight, the running back three, the running back ten, the running back four. So he's been good outside of games against Houston. Um, over the last six weeks, you've kind of seen the collapse of this Jaguars defense that looked good. They're 24th, uh, giving up over 20 fantasy points a game to running back. So you're going to play Derrick Henry uh, if yeah, you're still in it. I agree. Houston just – they figured out how to stop Derrick Henry. Not every team has figured that out. An update here for you, Jay. The record is 116 receptions. That yeah. is by Zach Ertz. So yeah. he's – I mean, he's within striking distance. No, he's not. <laughs> You're, you're he saying, needs he needs twelve to tie it. He has three games of ten or more receptions. He has. Does week, he have a game of twelve? Week fourteen, he had eleven catches. Okay, so if he that's gets called his, striking distance for a, an all time record. If he gets his career high in catches, I don't know if it's career high, but season, season high. All right, with well, season high, you can go through his game log. I don't know if he's ever hit twelve. Uh, he had eleven last year. That would have been his best chance. No, he's never hit that. He's never hit that in his entire career. And that's just a tie. You want to take a record, you break a record. He's not getting it. Just saying. Bubble screens for Evan Engram. Let's make it happen. The New York Jets, they are 6-10 and 10 somehow. The New England Patriots are 4-12. and 12. The DraftKings Sportsbook line is New England favored by two points. The over Confirmed. I went through his entire career game. 11's line. the high? Yes. All right. Okay. What were you saying? Sorry, I love, I love. There is no chance that he can get anywhere near it because he has been one reception under. I'm glad you see the truth. The Patriots, uh, the over under. That's what I was going to talk about. Thirty and a half. Ooh, nice over thirty. Trevor Simeon versus Bailey Zappi. Go Jets. Go That's J just for the Cardinals draft pick. Oh, what's the there's no got, other reason. What's on the line? No, just because. You want a, a, a uh, or no? Wait, go Patriots then. Yeah, <laughs> screw yeah, you, yeah, Jets. Yeah, yeah. yeah we you suck, Jets. <laughs> go Pats. That was quite the turn. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the playoff scenarios. Let's see. The New York Jets have been mm. eliminated from the playoffs. The New England Patriots have been also eliminated from the playoffs. My God, this game. All right, Brees, <laughs> Brees Hall. He's got seventy-four receptions on the year. Yeah, I mean, they, they target him so much that he, he should be, even though it's a, a very difficult matchup against the Patriots and they're going to be prepared for it, if he gets five or six receptions, that's at least a baseline where he should be fine and he has the, the long speed to break anything off. 
So you're starting Brees Hall if you got to this point. And if you got to this point, you got to this point on the back of Brees Hall. All right. Garrett Wilson, the most targets ever through two years in the NFL. Is that true? Yeah, he's had he's sitting at three hundred and ten targets. I mean, wow. They're they're not great targets most of the time because he he has a uh, let's see, of three hundred and ten targets, he has one hundred and seventy six receptions. Jefferson through thirty three games had two hundred and ninety two targets and one hundred and ninety six receptions. Yeah, so empty targets a lot for our boy Garrett Wilson. Hopefully that improves next year, but he's still. He's, he, you're still playing Garrett yeah, Wilson. Yeah, he's a good start. Week. Brees Hall, Garrett Wilson on that side of the ball. What are you doing on the other side of the ball? Zeke is in, I think. Oh, gosh. The Patriots are just, they're devils. Like, <sighs> Zeke should be in. Yeah. He's been top 24 and four the last five weeks. I'm just saying. He still had 16 opportunities um, this past week. So I'm saying if all of a sudden Zeke starts the game. Gets a couple touches, and then they go, okay, Kevin Harris, get in there. Dude, show us what you got. Last week. I won't be surprised. Kevin Harris, I feel like every time I looked up, every time I looked up, he was on the field. Um, 21% of the snaps. Yeah, I mean, week. I just. It was only four opportunities. It, it was crazy. I saw every single snap he was on there, every fake target, every catch. Um, but it was it was still the Zeke show. He had the vast bulk of the carry. So you're, you're starting Zeke. Is there anyone you could start in the receiving game? I, I'm gonna say no. I'm not yeah, gonna. I'm not gonna mess with Demario Douglas. They're both Douglas and Devontae Parker limited on, or Henry. Just here's. Let's yeah, move on I'm, from this. I game. agree. Zeke, Brees, Garrett Wilson. Don't start anyone else. All right. The Atlanta Falcons are seven and nine. They are taking on the New Orleans Saints, who are eight and eight. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: New Orleans favored by three. Over under is sitting at forty two points. Both teams fighting for a playoff spot, so everyone is incentivized to play. Arthur Smith maybe playing for his job arthur smith if he gets a loss this week he secures a contract extension that's <laughs> uh that's my understanding of the atlanta falcons with a, with right a sweet seven and ten yeah yeah you're gonna be pretty proud of his work um so atlanta a win plus a tampa bay loss moves them from the 11 seed to the four and they will be hosting a playoff game with a sub 500 record yeah the, this needs Whoever wins this game banished right to jail. <laughs> like if right, you right to jail. If you win your division and you are sub five hundred, you don't get a home playoff game. If I'm commish, yeah, this is what I'm doing. So would you give them a playoff game? You, they just don't get the four. Yeah, seed. yeah. You, you don't get. You do not get the home game. Yeah, because the let's see who does the the four plays the five. The is, Cardinals did that once. We did. Yeah, we we got we got. I I'm pretty, I thought we were five hundred. I don't think so. I think we were sub five. But. Hey, well, it, that's our, that's in the past, man. There's nothing <laughs> I can do about that. Nothing I can. I just remember Seattle had it happen. Um, it's it it's not fair. Th this game to these teams will start, and at least the first three quarters will feel like a playoff game. Uh, whoever wins has a chance to make the playoffs. Now, should Tampa Bay win their matchup that is happening at the same time? Uh, which they should win, then Tampa will clinch it. Um, yeah, because so they play the Carolina Panthers. Right. So there is a chance here if if you come around to halftime and they look at the score and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are, you know, up twenty eight to nothing. All of a sudden, the, the go, motivation well, for these teams. Uh, I think win. they'll. I think they'll still finish the game, no matter what. Uh, if the Bucks win and the Saints win, the Saints still have a chance to make the playoff. If other things break right, what really? Brooks? Wow. What needs to break right? I'll look into that. I Don't just tell me they have a chance. Okay. I think every other team competing would need to lose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's I think, I think it's extreme, but it's, it's possible. It's like every other matchup has to tie at 0-0. Zero, zero. It's possible, just like Evan Ingram breaking yes. the record is Not possible. Not possible, Brooks! We looked yeah. it up! Haven't you heard? He, he needs, needs 12, he needs 12 and receptions. He's, he's only ever had 11. Not Not possible. even close. Uh, Kyle says New Orleans can win the NFC South and the fourth seed with a win over the Falcons and a buck loss. I'm a beast. Or they can sneak into the wild card team with a win and losses from the Packers and Seahawks. I'm going to be sweating every Evan Ingram catch that this <laughs> week. <laughs> Just like counting them down. <laughs> Ten more. Oh, no. Nine he, more. The, the great part is if he gets to 12, 13 is coming. I hope so. You don't yeah. just tie a record. Peterson will make it happen. 
Uh, Taylor Heineke, four for 46 and a touchdown on the ground last week. He was limited in practice on Wednesday. I would prefer not. I don't think you're in a good situation for him. The past six weeks, the Saints have been number one against fantasy quarterbacks. Bijan. The last six weeks, they've been number one against quarterbacks, right. number two against wide receivers, number four against tight ends, and number six against running backs. Their defense has been on fire. This is a home game for the Saints. So if you're, when we're really breaking down this game, I think that this defense, this environment is going to come ready to roll, and the Atlanta Falcons offense is not good enough. Bijan is in. Bijan's still in. Yeah, he's he's talented enough. Gets uh, utilization in the passing game, kind of similar to Brees Hall, where if he's if he can end up with four or five receptions, he should have a good enough baseline and can break something off. In this week eighteen, when you are scrounging to find a running back to start, Tyler Algier, running back thirteen, running back fourteen in back to back weeks. Uh, no. On very limited opportunities. Yeah, I mean he had a uh, a thirty one yard breakaway uh run and a 75 yard reception yeah. this last week touchdown it, he, he it was awesome he only had five rushing attempts you you can't rely on that all right for tyler so he's out Drake and if you did not see that tyler algier play the most embarrassing 75 yard touchdown run any defense <laughs> has ever allowed it looked like you remember that play that austin eckler got a lot of flack for he went around the outside and uh -huh. like just slowed down and hit a top speed. I remember you giving him a lot of flack for it. You, I mean, he was. He remember was, that time that guy got just bodied just by bodied the by media? Some dude out there <laughs> um, in a hat and glasses <laughs> with a beard and is <laughs> little overweight. I mean, little. <laughs> um, but uh, Tyler Algier, he gets he gets the screen, and right when it happened, Andy and I were watching the game, and he goes, "Oh, that's going to be a big one," because the defense was like right. super. Yeah, it was out a of position. perfect screen, and so and then it was like, "Oh, it's going to be a big. Oh, it's going to be a touchdown. It's going to be the biggest." But it was. It took a while for that <laughs> play to. It was like, "Where is the defense? You had forever to catch him." I think what happened genuinely on that play is that the defense all assumed someone else <laughs> got this. Like genuine. I'm not even making a joke. I think. The, there were three it or happens. four players where it was like, oh, the, that guy's close. He's going to tackle him, but then a block happened or something. And then they were like, oh, I got to chase him down. And they bare, they should have caught him, but they still didn't. All Anyways. right, so Algiers out. Drake London, 10 targets last week, 5 for 91 on 7 targets versus New Orleans in week 12. My understanding on Marshawn Lattimore <laughs> is... Um, yeah, I mean, Drake, Drake London this week, you're going to have a lot of wide receivers. You can't play. So it's okay. -ish. I, it, it's okay. -ish. I would not love it. I mean, you, you talk about 10 targets last week. He didn't get 10 fantasy points with that. Um, the, the saints are a tough team. I, I think you're going to be disappointed with Drake London. I would prefer to pivot Derek Carr. You sending in the car? I'm asking two passing you. touchdowns, three passing touchdowns, three passing touchdowns, two passing touchdowns. He's yeah. He's been getting it done. He seems at least like I mean, we read off that huge list of starting quarterbacks at the beginning of, of the show. I would much rather have Derek Carr. Let, let me let me give you some names. Okay. Um Trevor Lawrence against Tennessee or Derek Carr. Oh man. I since look, Ingram's gonna have thirteen catches, so I'll go Trevor Lawrence. <laughs> I think I'm actually Carr there. Um how about Gardner Minshew against Houston right. in a game that Maybe hits the over under, mm, or Derek go. Carr has been throwing tutties. I'll go Carr, okay. Um, and then I th I think the rest of the the questionable guys: Jordan Love, Tua, Geno Smith, Kyler. The, you're going to take all those guys over Derek Carr, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Kamara did not practice on Wednesday. Jamal Williams. I yeah. mean, it will be. You know, three yards in a cloud of dust type of a situation. But if they get to the goal line, Jamal would be the one to punch it in if Alvin Kamara is to miss. Kendra yeah. Miller, their rookie running back. I would love it if he could make it back. I would too. I, we just we, – we want to see. Uh, he's, can he do it? He's been – I mean, he's such a talented player. He's yeah. just been injured the whole year. He's been out with an ankle injury since week nine. Um bringing him back for like a final game if he's limited in practice. I, I will say this. I don't think you could start him. I think Jamal Williams is the right play. Yes. But I will be super excited if Kamara does not suit up, which I think there's a good chance of that, 
I'll be super excited to see Kendra Miller out there if he's yeah. if he can get back. I can agree with that. Olave was limited in practice. Uh, Shahid remains the just if you need some nitro, you might get it. You're probably not going to. I think this week, kind of similar to last week, Darius Slayton. When you look at guys that are widely available that have that boom potential, that that's what Rashid Shahid yeah, yeah. is. I would rather the go Slayton. Darius Slayton. Yeah, I can agree with that. Now, what about my dude here, Jay? Juwan Johnson, tight end for the New Orleans Saints, who absolutely got it done as the tight end one last week. Last three weeks for Juwan. Tight end nine with 11 points. Tight end four with 13. Tight end one with 19 points. Are you chasing I, after Juwan? Who which I'm not. did not practice due to uh, chest injury on Wednesday, but that's not going to take – Keep I'm, him out of the game. I'm not chasing the upside of last week in a phenomenal matchup. But three straight weeks. But he's he's a fine play. You know, if you've been playing him, I would just keep doing it. I, I'm i guessing most people in their championship. I mean, if you lost Hawkinson, that was a pivot Juwan last Juwan or Kyle week. Pitts? I would go Juwan. Okay. So he's yeah he's, a, he's, he's, in, he's in play. play. All right. Tampa Bay, 8-8. Eight and eight. The Carolina Panthers, 2-14. and 14. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Tampa Bay is favored by four and a half. The over-under is 37 and a half. The Carolina Panthers. <laughs> oh, this is a great Kyle. note. This is a great note. The yeah. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers went and in, eliminated with a loss. Yeah, and then the Carolina Panthers were eliminated the moment they took Bryce Young. Oh, man. Kyle. Oh, yeah. Those are Kyle's words. I love it. I love it. He may not be wrong, but they're mean. They're mean words. Among first-round rookie quarterbacks since 2012, he has the worst sack rate at 10.39%. Okay. He has the lowest yards per attempt at 5.5. Okay. Um, Stroud has the highest. So, Bryce Young, Bryce Young's, he has looked <sighs> Come terrible. Come on, Bryce. He's looked terrible. Come on, Bryce. We, we talk all the time about you need to see flashes. Will Levis has been bad. But you've seen flashes out of Will Levis. It's like, oh, man. We had one game from Bryce. We had one game where he was like. Against the Packers. Yeah, no, I know. I know. 64% completion rate, 312 yards, two touchdowns. That's a good game. Uh, it was his best game for sure. Um, but he's still, even in that game, I remember coming in and you guys were like, oh, Bryce looked good that game. I was like, he still made a bunch of. The same bad throws he's been making. That's fine, though. Just need to see some signs of life. But anyways, you're not playing Bryce Young. Uh, Baker Mayfield, top 12 in three of his past four games. He's the QB9 on the season. I believe he has a financial incentive to finish like top five in the uh, NFC of passer rating, something like that. Again, we have a great article on the website from Matthew Betts. You can check all that out. But where are you with, with Baker? Uh, Baker's been really, really good, but you don't want to play passing options against Carolina. We, this is a lesson every year. There's a team like the Carolina Panthers last year was the Houston Texans where you go, Oh, they're, they're a bad team. You want to play your guys against them, but you just want to play your running backs against them. Now you're not going to bench Mike Evans because he's been so great. Godwin's been kind God, of on fire. God, Godwin's been good too, but I'm, I'm personally not wanting to start Chris Godwin um, against this matchup. I mean, on the course of the season, the Panthers are the second toughest matchup for quarterbacks, the second toughest matchup for wide receivers, and the number one fewest fantasy points given up when you adjust for schedule against tight ends while they suck against running backs. It's because the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to be in the lead and they're going to be spending half of the game just kind of running the clock out. So you get a half. You, you have to hope that Rashad White doesn't score the first touchdown. If Rashad, you know, Mike Evans or Chris Godwin get that first touchdown, because as soon as you get basically ten points in most games this year against the Panthers, you don't need much more. And so Baker, I'm not excited about. I would, you know, all those other options, the Derek Carr and all those guys we mentioned. I would start over Baker this week. Okay, Rashad yeah. White, heck yeah, yeah. It was unfortunately his first bust game since Week Six. But Rashad White has been getting it done for fantasy football. On the other side, are you playing Chuba? Uh, how's his health? <laughs> I, I can't speak to it at the, the You didn't talk moment. to him this morning or No, anything? I didn't. I it's been a while. I haven't I've lost connection with Chuba. 
Um, Chuba has been a volume play. He played last week, still had 16 total opportunities, five targets in the game. I think you can play him, but the matchup against Tampa Bay is really, really difficult. I don't expect a lot of efficiency from him. So he's like a flex option to me at best. What about me, Jason? <laughs> Do I have one more? Do you have one more in you? Let's finish strong. Um, well, Jason! It's, a, it's a great matchup for you, Adam Thielen. Uh, play me. I'll play Whack. you. I'll play you this week. Oh no! Did you croak? No. I'm still, okay. Here. I'm still here. Oh good. I fell asleep. <laughs> oh okay. That's what that was. <laughs> Good. I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm glad you didn't die yet. It's uh, look. It, it's a great the matchup, matchup. Is there? Yeah. I, I'm. I'm fine starting him. What? Do you, <laughs> would you start Bryce Young? No. Okay. Well, you were Mister Talk Up Bryce Young. You had I said yards. he has. Uh, he had a game. Well, it's a great matchup. Maybe if he can. No. Have, you're. I haven't seen Flash. <laughs> Man, you're a harsh, harsh critic. That's true. Uh, but yeah, I. I legit think Adam Thielen is a fine play. The Buccaneers. On the season, thirty first, if you adjust for schedule against uh, fantasy wide receivers. So Adam Thielen's a good play, and Jonathan Bingo yeah. went to the IR. And you, what yes, what yeah, that is that is an important note. What you've seen um, over the second half of the season is Adam Thielen, who started so so strong. Um, a lot of the targets started going to Jonathan Mingo. Now they weren't as valuable. Mingo wasn't as efficient with those targets, and so the Panthers didn't succeed anymore. But with Mingo completely out of the way, I think they're going to drop a lot of automatic plays for Thielen. Yeah. They, I mean, you want to talk about incentive. You're eliminated. You're trying to make sure that your rookie quarterback can have a some momentum heading into the offseason. They're, they're not going to lay down. They are really going to try and beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers this week. So, yeah, Adam Thielen is a good play. Let's go on to the starts. Starts of the week. All right, Jay, who's your quarterback? Uh, my quarterback start of the week this week is Justin Fields. Ooh, speaking of playing for the yeah. future, this is your final audition before the draft. Justin Fields is playing for his job, either yep. somewhere else or I think he prefers with the Bears. Uh, and, of course. And you, we, we talked about the dynasty outlook of him is so wide because he could either be traded and become someone that you have no confidence in going forward, maybe as a backup quarterback for another team, or a potential starter for a bad team, or they draft Marvin Harrison Jr. with their top pick, and now he's got DJ Moore and Harrison Jr. But this week, he gets to play spoiler against the hated division rivals Green Bay Packers. Uh, here's a quote from Fields on playing Green Bay this week. Quote, their fans are going to be loud because there's not much to do in Green Bay except watch football. <laughs> oh, baby. Let's go to the the resident Packer fan. You have visited Green Bay a good like very often? Yeah. Okay, is he correct? They like to drink there. Yeah, too. I was gonna say. I, I was just gonna. If you said yes, I was gonna say that is not true. They love drinking too. Uh, that sounds like a city I want to go to. I mean, <laughs> it's a good time. Just, just beers, and just football? beers and football, baby. Wow. Um, that's why they are great fans. But since week it's four, a high T city up there. Since week four, Justin Fields, um, he's he is averaging twenty point seven fantasy points per game. He's been a top four quarterback in three of his last four starts. And since week 11, Green Bay is 25th in schedule adjusted fantasy points to quarterbacks. I think he has a great game. Do people, Jeremy, do people in Green Bay know that moving is an option? I, oh, come on. I'm sure they do, but it, it's a good it's a good <laughs> I, time there. I, I've, I've never been. You can, I ask myself all the time, do people in Phoenix, Arizona know that moving is an option? Yeah. Because I know, because it's not. When that's you're, when that's a great point. When you've got roots... You're stuck, man. Yeah, if we... I could winter here in summer, there that would be. That'd okay, be so it, it it's a delightful place. It is, yeah. Right. Mm. Someday, someday, my quarterback star of the week. I'm going back to my streamer. It's Tyrod Taylor. He gets to take on the Philadelphia Eagles. Somehow remains a great matchup for our fantasy quarterbacks and wide receivers. It was the QB eleven last week? You can have a rushing floor with them. Philly dead last and schedule just at points to quarterbacks. They're on pace to see the sixth most, most passing attempts of all time. Tyrod is in play. My running back start of the week is Devin Singletary. I think he is a phenomenal play. He has an incentive if he gets like 146 yeah, rushing yards or something. Wild. It's wild, but maybe he gets there. But the Texans clearly trust 
Devin Singletary, a lot more than they trust Damian Pierce. And this is a must-win playoff type of game for the Texans. Since week 10, he's the running back nine, averaging 13.2 fantasy points per game on a whopping 19 and a half opportunities per game in that span. And the Colts have been a run funnel defense all year. They are 30th in schedule adjusted fantasy points to running back. So the rushing incentive, Jay, that one we had looked up is pretty far-fetched because it's like 140 rushing yards. But scrimmage yards, he currently has 1,026. He needs 1,100 total, and he will get an extra 125K. That All is right. reasonable. All right. Now, you're saying that's far-fetched for him to get it, but based on my scientific method of game logs and has he done it before, like right. in Ingram, you're uh -huh. like, oh, that's not far-fetched. He's close. Uh huh. Pfft. Dude's already done it. 150 rushing yards against Cincinnati in week 10. Okay, so you're taking you're taking him to hit the yeah, science. <laughs> He'll get there. Okay. Uh my running back start of the week it was all ready to be Elijah Mitchell cuz I had gotten into the show doc first. Then we get the report that he's missing and he's sick and now we are hearing from the Athletic that Jordan Mason could be the starter or at least see significant playing time. Follow the news. But if Jordan Mason is the guy, He's going to get a bunch of volume. The San Francisco 49er running back always produces. Yes, he is not Christian McCaffrey. He won't have the starters for the full game. But he's just like the Rams really don't have a ton of incentive either. Like Aaron Donald's going to rest. So Jordan Mason, if he is out there on your waiver wire, you need to pick him up even if you're not going to play him. Like your opponent is also scrambling for players. Both Elijah Mitchell and Jordan Mason should be picked up and on your bench, ready to play. Yeah, I think D Donald being out is really important because the Rams' run defense has been great, but if they're sitting their great run defense. If they're sitting their run defense. That's great. Um, my wide receiver start of the week, Michael Pittman Jr. We built this city versus Houston. We built yeah, baby. City. We're all in on him. Pity City's arguably been one of the most dependable wide receivers in football. He's averaging 10 targets and 74 receiving yards per game this year. He has 203 receptions over the last two years. That's the fifth most in the entire NFL. And he's going to get paid this offseason. But yeah. the home matchup is great. We talked about it earlier this episode against the Texans. They are a pass-funnel defense. He had 12 targets against them in Week 2. And since Week 10, the Texans are 30th in schedule-adjusted fantasy points to wide receivers, 28th in yards per attempt. And I'm going with DeAndre Hopkins against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yeah, I understand that Ryan Tannehill is probably the quarterback. But here's the thing. The Jags 23rd in schedule-adjusted fantasy points to the wide receivers. And Schmoney! Follow that Schmoney! He needs 49 yards to get a million bucks. Good ka Thank money, you. Money, money. He needs seven receptions for another $250,000. I imagine at the very least he will get the 49 yards for a million. DeAndre Hopkins, another one of those receivers who will be in the huddle going, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, Tanny, come on. Come I, on, I'll, I'll, I'll cut you off some I'll, of this cash. I'll, I'll give you 50K for seven <laughs> receptions. I mean, Dude, that's just a good business. Decision. Who doesn't do that? I would do that. I mean, you're, 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 your team is playing for nothing, Yeah, and you're like, you're like well, okay, we got another run to Derrick Henry, and, and then Hopkins just pulls out of Benjamin. No, we don't, yeah. Ryan Tannehill. I think we got a target he's, he's coming got, my he's way. He's got the, the hand warmer on front. It's, it's just, just stuffed cash. with bills. Just like, here you go. <laughs> oh, 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 Ryan, did you drop that? Just is, me, is that your stack of money? Tuck that into your belt line Because I there. think you said uh, uh, screen pass to DeAndre Hopkins, right? Yeah. Right? Uh, so, yeah. Once um, again, the headset has gone out on Ryan Tannehill. Every play, Tannehill. Can't, can't, can't hear you. Can't, can't hear you. Screen to hop. <laughs> Um, I like it. Follow that. Follow that shmoney. My tight end start of the week is Dallas Goddard at the New York Giants. The last two weeks, he's the tight end 10 and the tight end 4. He actually leads the Eagles in targets per route run over the last three weeks, ahead of A.J. Brown, ahead of Devontae Smith. And Devontae Smith is a little banged up right now. He's an integral part of this offense. The Giants have been torched by tight ends the last three weeks, including Dallas Goddard who had seven for 71 on nine targets in week 16. And I'm going to chase in another incentive. Dalton Schultz taking on the Colts, the, the tight end from the Houston Texans. He needs four receptions to hit a $250,000 incentive. And it's 
not like he's a bad player. He's the tight end 10 on the season. He's averaging nearly six targets a game. Last week against Tennessee was a pretty big bummer, but if you made it through and you have Dalton Schultz, I think that they will make sure he gets at least four catches. And that if he gets four catches, that's that should be at least 50, 60 yards. And you'll take that from your, your tight end, especially if you're at that range. Yeah, and, and we've we've seen with Stroud him have plenty of big yeah. games. All right, that's going to do it for the first part of the breakdowns. We made it through, Jason. Tomorrow, our special episode. Make sure you stay tuned. Yeah. Hey, Fooklin. Shh. It's a secret. Also, FooklinGiveaway.com. Yes. Vote for Mike. To yeah, get his awards. I, I like to win. I know all y'all like to. Who doesn't like to win? Losers. Yeah, that's who. <laughs> yeah, I mean. So check that out, Foot Clan Giveaway. And again, fantasychamps.com. If you buy a uh, belt or a trophy, promo code free ring, you get that $59 ring for free. And it's a great one. That's It's the ring that I got that I've added into my collection. Very excited for it to arrive. That's going to do it, everybody. Thank you for sticking with us all season long. We've got another show tomorrow. See you then. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.